So, fourteenth of March, Pi Day, exciting. But I don't have anything very fancy to do today, and I'm also incredibly, incredibly tired. So I will do like kind of like a basic thing. I'm gonna read. So yeah, I have exactly three books that I've started for a while, and I haven't managed to read. And I think you know, Pi is three point one four. one five and something else so i think like oh three books that sounds promising so i'm gonna go and read a little bit of each book so let me go through the books so i'm gonna go in order of how i started them i first uh, started the story of mathematics around july or june or something like that last year which almost makes it like a year since i've started and i read just like maybe two chapter or you can see two chapters and something like that so i don't feel very proud the book is not hard to read it's like really interesting it has images and stuff it's it's nice but i just i didn't i didn't finish it no excuse but that's what that's what happened on the back it says for hundreds of thousands of years we have sought order in the apparent chaos of the universe mathematics has been our most valuable tool in the search uncovering the patterns and rules that govern our world and beyond the story of mathematics traces humankind's greatest achievements plotting a journey from enumerate cave dwellers through the towering mathematical intellects of the last 4000 years to where we stand today a hey. So yeah, it's not hard to read. It's pretty interesting. So I just need to keep reading it. Second book I have is The Tales of Impossibility, this one, and that's the dust jacket. It's it looks really nice for a pie day because he has like a small pie in the middle and stuff. And the general description is Tales of Impossibility recounts the intriguing story of the renowned problems of antiquity. Antiquity. Hmm. Four of the most famous and studied questions in the history of mathematics. First, posed by the ancient Greeks, this complex, complex, compass and straight edge problems, squaring the circle, transecting an angle, doubling the cube, and inscribing regular polygons in a circle, have served. as ever present muses for mathematicians for more than two millennia david richardson follows the trail of these problems to show that ultimately their proofs demonstrating the impossibility of solving them using only a compass and straight edge depend on and result dependent on and resulted in the growth of mathematics very interesting book like really really interesting and i enjoy it a lot it's just it's packed with a lot of information and i'm reading it slowly so i can digest everything i'm also reading like the notes for every single chapter and and like sub chapter or like small part of it and it's it's really interesting like i i totally like it but because i like it so much it takes me a longer time to read it so yeah it's also the book uh, chosen for I think is December and January for our LTH Math Book Club. So I'm in March, and I'm not even halfway through it. So I need to push a little bit. And then I've got the Mathematical Tourist, which is the book chosen for February and March for our LTH Math Book Club. And again, I've read just one chapter. I think that's what just one chapter. over here and it's it's not hard to read this one either it has a lot of images it's it's very interesting so i should be able to fly through stuff but anyway so on the back it says you're about to embark on an unforgettable tour through a fan- fascinating land oh my goodness i can't speak properly through a fascinating land of chaos and order of cryptology and code breaking of labyrinths higher dimensions and soaring fractal towers with renowned science journalist evers peterson sorry if i didn't say the name right as your guide you'll visit some rather fantastic yet very real regions and then it gives you a list of the regions over here 
sounds very interesting so yeah i mean i should should go through them pretty okay so my plan for today is to read at least three hours in total obviously i don't think i will have enough time to read three hours in in one go but yeah three hours maybe i can do three hours and 14 minutes so that it sounds like a really nice pie day stuff but who knows i'm i'm gonna see i will film short videos after i finish like i don't know one hour of reading or like two hours of reading or like something like that i'm gonna see how it's gonna go and yeah so wish me luck also let me know what you've done for pie day because i think i would really like to know if you've done anything special even if you read a little bit for like i don't know a couple of minutes i would still want to know what you've read and how the day was for you so yeah i will keep you updated on how this thing goes so first update of the day so basically i think i read for like around maybe an hour and 10 minutes or something like that but i could not focus on everything for most of the time that's because i'm trying to upload a short video on facebook and for some reason it just does not want to upload so i had to properly stop a couple of times and read paragraphs all over again because i could not remember that's how like annoyed i was anyway going on with the book i'm reading the story of mathematics and in case you're wondering this is how i have my pencil when i read and it was really interesting i went into the shape of things so that's like the geometry but it went really interestingly from like measure and units all the way like made the transition so smooth to geometry we went to some like interesting aspects and then again very interesting historical aspects over here and we went on from geometry again so smooth to the three problems with the straight edge and compass the squaring the circle trisecting the angle and doubling the cube that are in the other book i am reading so let me show you that book as well they are the main idea of this book so that was really interesting and then it went on to to trigonometry and that was very interesting like i think i liked the bit on trigonometry from here a little bit more so oh, also my favorite mention of hypatia of alexandria yes excited so and then we got some very interesting bits about trigonometry and i think this was my favorite aspect of this chapter so far and it was the fact that i had i had no idea so i'm gonna go very quickly over this one so triangles and water one practical application of trigonometry was to calculate the gradient of water flow the sinalese I, I can't pronounce the name properly so i'm very very sorry guys inhabitants of the city of and again not sure how to pronounce that but it's in sri lanka used trigonometry for this purpose theirs was one of the greatest asian civilizations of the ancient world to farm the dry land around the supply water of the huge city they built a highly sophisticated irrigation system which consisted of all overground and underground channels reservoirs and ponds it was like that's a practical application of trigonometry it's so cool it's so interesting anyway so that was my wow i like this a lot and then a lot of other bits that was really interesting so i'm stopping at chapter four in the round which i really don't know what's about but i'm gonna leave it there so that's around like one hour and ten minutes but i think i'm gonna count it as one hour i'm gonna see how i feel about it later because i i couldn't concentrate 100 percent on the book but anyway i still read for a lot, around one hour okay so i haven't been reading much to be fair but i'm still going on with my three hours and 14 minutes maybe i can finish this by the end of march hopefully who knows if 
fingers crossed. Anyway, so I'm going on with, I'm starting my second hour right now, and I have Tales of Impossibility. I'm gonna see if I can actually read for one hour. Who knows, maybe I will be able. Um, yeah, just to let you know, I am on the chapter on Eratosthenes Mesolate. How? On, well, I have no idea how to pronounce that. But yeah, so I have no idea what that is. And yeah, exciting. So I will let you know how this goes after I manage to read one hour, hopefully. So, yeah, great. Let me get started. So I have over here my, oh, which I can't open. Oh, I managed to open my pencil, my rubber, in case I want to note, and for my glasses, hip hip hooray. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's go. So, well, I've read another hour for another hour, and I think this chapter pretty worked pretty well for what I want to do. So, it's an early history of Pi, and I quite liked it because he went on like pretty interesting facts about how different civilization got to discover kind of and understand Pi. So, you get Mesopotamia, you get Egypt, you get India, China, and then you get the bibli biblical value of pi, which is very interesting, like I had no idea it's mentioned in the Bible. And then I've got to this one, which is chapter 7. So it was pretty interesting. I quite enjoyed this one because you got to um, construct a square with the same area as uh, the figure using only a compass and straight edge. So it was to square a figure. So you got to square a rectangle and then a triangle and then any sided polygon. So that was interesting. And then, um, yeah, you got to square loons and see which ones you can actually square and which ones you cannot which was very interesting so very excited for it and pretty interesting these two chapters and i am at this one so leonardo da vinci's loons so oh sorry so this is what i've read so far i'm i'm gonna stop and I will let you know when I manage to read for an extra hour. So I have one more hour and 14 minutes and then I am done. So yeah, this is, oh, can't see it properly. This is where I am for the whole book. So yeah, I will let you know how things are going. I still want to read. So I think the other hour is going to be spent on reading The Mathematical Tourist. So, yeah, I will speak to you soon. Enjoy. So, last hour and 14 minutes for the <laughs> readathon, or however you want to call it. I think I will call it like a pie readathon, if that makes any sense. Because at this point, it has been going over the whole of March. So, yeah anyway um so i still have one hour and 14 minutes to read i am finally working from home so i will have enough time to go and read for one hour hopefully i don't know i don't know at least i'm not traveling anymore so yeah this is what i want to do right now so i've been reading one hour from the other two books i have i still have going on and i feel like i really want to read this one a little bit of this one this is the mathematical tourist this is the book for february and march for our book club which i am incredibly behind and yeah 
But anyway, so I am a chapter number two, Prime Pursuits, and I will go on and read for one hour and 14 minutes, hopefully, and I will let you know how I feel after that. So wish me luck, one hour and 14 minutes, starting now. So I finally managed to read for one hour and around like maybe 10, 12 minutes or something like that. But I kind of, I, I will stop because I finished a chapter, which is a good thing. So I finished chapter two, which is called Prime Pursuit. And as the name suggests, is just prime numbers. A lot of stuff about prime numbers, very interesting bits of information and yeah everything quite interesting and i'm a big fan of prime numbers in general and i think everything about prime numbers is incredibly interesting and even though most of the things mentioned here were kind of i i already knew them so nothing was completely new for example it speaks about mercine Mer, mercine mercine numbers you know what I mean. Um, I knew about it, and other other stuff like that, like the for the polynomial formulas, like that x squared plus x plus forty one that was considered to produce primes, and some others. So he mentions a lot of those things. Then you have something related to computers that are checking on those primes and and stuff like that and yeah and it starts with like some modular numbers and that was that was good so yeah interesting and yeah exciting so i managed to for this last hour and 10 to 12 minutes i managed to read a total of approximately three hours and 14 minutes in total which is which is a shame a little bit because i've been trying to do this for the whole of march just because on the 14th of march we were doing the pi day and i i couldn't get organized there were too many things on my head and too stressed for everything so i just managed to read three hours and 14 minutes since 14th of march which is so small like you can't even imagine like how sad i am for all of this because i'm used to read like a lot of books not even about like math but like generally so for example last year i managed to read a hundred fictional books and then i've read around like 15 other books that were non-fiction and i just for reading just like for three hours and 14 minutes in just like i don't know around two and a half weeks it feels insane and even like fiction books i haven't been able to properly read a lot of them so i feel so sad i don't feel stressed or anything about not reading that much but i feel sad because reading is what keeps me going most of the time so yeah but i hope i will go strong in april because i feel a little bit better about the rest of the things that are happening around me so i i hope i can't promise a lot but i hope i will try and do a readathon like a proper day of just continuous reading in april at one point i i can't promise and i'm not sure if i will mention it on social media anywhere but if i do it i will film it and i will post it somewhere so i will let you know how i'm doing but yeah yeah just just bear with me things are gonna go slowly back to normal at one point but the stress has been insane so yeah i hope you're fine and you're safe and healthy and yeah i will speak to you soon enjoy the day bye